Peeps, so welcome back to Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're going to do a double applique project. So let's get to it. So what is a double applique? It's exactly what it sounds like. Basically, two appliques on top of each other, and the bottom one being a slightly bigger so that you can kind of see it stack up. So it kind of looks maybe more like 3D or kind of like a shadow? Yeah, a little bit. So this was a video requested by one of our viewers, so thanks for the idea. And we're going to go ahead and show you how to do this. Let's go. So we're in Inkscape, and we're going to go ahead and go to our 4x4 template. And we pre-made these, and we have videos going over how to do that, so you can check those out. So we found two ways to do this, and you can't just make a letter and then make it bigger and then put it over it, because it will just not line up. So now we're going to show you how to actually do it. So what you can do is you're just going to go to this little text tool here. You can put whatever letter you're going to do, so I'm just going to put M. Or whatever word you want to do. Yeah. Whatever object you want to do, for that matter. And so I'm just going to edit the text and do the size and font I want. To Arial Bot. And we're just going to try doing a bold and kind of blocky text because we've just thought maybe that would be easier than like some very intense loopy cursive. Yeah, now you could obviously go mm -hmm. through whatever you want to do or whatever shapes that you want to do uh, for this, uh, but we're just for demonstration purposes just going to do a simple yeah. um, for the double applique. And you might notice that we don't have any holes in this and that'll just be easier for us, but you can go through all those steps. So now that we have our M, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Command D and I'm going to change the color so you can see that under it, there's another one, which will come in handy later. So now that we have our M duplicated, we can go to path and then we can go to outset. And you can see that it just kind of made it a little bit bigger in a sense. And you can just go to command and then we're going to go to the parentheses to adjust the size. And then once we have this, you can just go to these little um, tools that kind of move where it is. And... It's a stacking tool. So we can basically move it on the bottom of the stack on that layer. Mm -hmm. Which is what I'm going to do. And now you can see that you can run an offset. And if you wanted to, you can just play around with it. And then there's one way to do it. So another way to do it that we found is called a link offset. Uh, so pretty much the same thing, but you get a little bit different outcome. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same letter that Megan has, same font, size. So now for mine, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure it's selected. Uh, we're going to go to Path and Linked Offset. And you can see it changes us over to the Node tool from the Selection tool. And it gives us a little white diamond uh, up at the top. And if you drag this out, you can see that it actually kind of makes the letter bigger and rounds the edges a bit. And if I change the color of this, you can see basically the same thing that Megan has, but just slightly different results. And where I think the linked offset really makes its money is when you're doing words, uh, because it kind of smushes them together really nicely compared to um, the outset that Megan has. So if I were to show that, I just do, I'll go over here on the side. Linked offset. So you can get really like really neat looking results where it kind of scrunches it all together. And then you still have your text right there in the middle. So pretty neat. So from this point, now that our design is done, now it's just about setting up the design for embroidery. So we have some param settings that we have to do and we have some design changes that we need to make, uh, turning things into strokes in order to sew things down correctly. Um, so we'll get to work on that. And we found the best way to do that is working in layers. All right, so we're not gonna do this word. We'll do one of these items. Which one do you wanna do? We can do the more bubbly one. Okay, so go ahead and get rid of this one. And the reason we're only doing one is because the process is really the same for any of these designs. Control, drag this out. We're gonna make it as big as possible so we can kind of see those um, different embroidery uh, type shapes. So um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to turn everything into a path. So we'll go to path, object to path. And 
a very critical thing is you can't do that before you do it because we found that doesn't work. Um, okay, so we'll work on the bottom layer first. Actually, I kind of wanted to do a bigger offset on this. Okay, so I, I just redesigned this real quick just so I can get a little bit thicker first layer applique on there. So again, I want to select everything here and I'm going to go path, object to path. And then I'm going to just again, make this a little bit bigger. So we'll work on the first layer first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift and select a stroke color. And then I'm going to hit the little X here to get rid of the fill. So as it is, uh, it's a tiny little stroke that's all that goes all the way around here. And for my first layer, uh, for layer number one, I want it to just be a lockdown stitch that mm -hmm. goes all the way around it. So it's, that means it's going to be a dashed line. So I'm going to go to where's our go style. And I'm gonna turn that into a dashed line. So that's on layer one, which we'll go ahead and rename. Then we'll go ahead and add a layer. First applique. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that first one from the lockdown and I'm gonna hit Command D. And then I'm gonna move that to my first applique uh, layer. And now when I hide my lockdown layer, you can see everything but my first applique stuff goes away. Now I can change this to a stroke because we're, we're going to put down our first applique layer with a stroke after we cut out the excess material. Um, so we're going to go back into our stroke layers and we're going to turn that back into a solid line. And then we're going to go ahead and increase that stroke line. So from there, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a satin line. We're going to convert line to satin. And what we like about this is it gives us really nice rounded edges. So it's less jagged there. So that's exactly what I want. I'm going to go ahead and make sure params is set up for this right now. That doesn't look too good. What happened there? Not sure. So I'm going to just reduce this a bit. Something's wrong there. I think it's this. I'm gonna go into the node selected tool. And I'm gonna move these. Because I think this is why. Much better. Much better. With just a little bit of adjustment, apparently. I'm not sure why it uh, didn't work out the first time there, but okay, so now that that's all settled. So the next thing is we're gonna go back into our layers and oh, before I do anything, I'm gonna change the color of this, hit shift black, because we need to make sure that each layer is gonna be a different color so that we can stop the machine to do like operations like cut out the excess material and everything. So I'm gonna bring that one back and then I'm gonna select this one, shift pink. And then for our M, we're gonna make a new layer this is going to be the second applique. Yeah, I did that wrong. We'll move that one up top. Now I'm going to take the M here and I'm going to move that to the second applique layer. So now we have the M. For the second applique, we're just going to use felt on top. So we're just going to do a single straight stitch around this M. We're going to select our color and this one will make red and we're going to get rid of the fill because we don't want it to fill and then we have to change this to a dashed line. Go back to our layers and turn everything back on and now it should go in order. So it, the order that it should go is in pink for that lockdown and then we can cut out the excess material and then the second layer which will put a nice stroke around that first layer of applique, and then we'll put our felt on top, and we'll do that red M right there on top, and then we can cut off the excess material on that, and we'll have a double layer applique. 
you can do a stroke on the upper part as well. Just depends on what kind of look you want out of it. And we're using felt, so it should have a nice, a decent line. Mm -hmm. that we, as long we as we cut well. As long as we cut well, exactly. This will work out cool. All right, let's get to sewing. So it just finished embroidering and I think it turned out pretty cool for our first one. And if you could change anything about this design for the next time you do it, what would you do? I would probably make the stroke along the outer edge here a little bit thinner. Um, I normally, when we do applique, like to make it as thick as possible so that I don't have to cut as close to the edge. But we ended up covering a lot of our first layer applique because it's covered with the stroke. So I would probably narrow that out a little bit or even make the uh, inner M a little bit smaller so that you could see more of the first layer applique. But other than that, it turned out really well. We used felt on top so that we didn't have to run a stroke on the second layer of applique as you know, if we used like a regular cotton weave type material, we would have had to do. Um, but with felt, just a single layer lockdown stitch and then cut close along the edge, ends up looking pretty neat. So, liked it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on notifications so you don't mind every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye. <laughs>